kind of unique is uh, how recessed the engine is down there. Nice looking engine overall, though. And it gives you very solid power. The interior is exceptionally nice with the uh, open pour wood over there and also extending over onto the dashboard with the metal kind of accent lines along there. That's super nice. Uh, excellent quality plastics, as you'd expect. And of course, the console has, uh, you know, leather extending over here and then the chrome accents continuing uh, on the console there. Uh, like the Acura dual screen setup, it's kind of nice so you don't have to try to squeeze all the information onto one screen. One pretty cool feature I hadn't really experienced before is, and you may be able to hear it, this screen here has haptic feedback, so when you press a button you get a, a vibration uh, from the screen, so you know you don't even have to be looking over to know that whatever you did was successful uh, in taking. So uh, all the autonomous driving tech uh, is present here along with the super handling all wheel drive which I'll talk about more in the drive review. The sunroof is not panoramic on this model but the trade-off for that is you do get extremely wide screen here uh, that really you know would allow you to have two different sources going on uh, which is pretty nice because not everyone in back will want to watch the same thing. That this does have the ELS uh, surround sound system with DTS uh, as well on there, which uh, sounds great. Uh, really one of the better systems out there. You know, the seats are super comfortable and have nice bolstering. Uh, no complaints about that. Um, it like I like the white contrasting uh, stitching and piping. Uh, on there, that's kind of a nice touch you wouldn't necessarily find uh, in a lot of SUVs that weren't super, super you high. Charge your device. There are three ports up here to do, as well as an AC outlet down here, which is nice. And then, in addition to that, there's actually two more uh, high uh, amperage uh, ports back. Rear passenger area as well. So the question remains: How is it to drive? I definitely like down I here. It almost feels like a cockpit um, set up on the transmission. The transmission is one of the things that's critiqued on this car. It's no worse than some of the dual clutch uh, units out there. It isn't the best though. It's fuel efficient. But there is, you know, in between like first and second gear on the lower end, uh, a little bit of lurchiness. Again, it's not bad. Uh, uh, among luxury SUVs, it's noticeable. Uh, it wouldn't prevent me from buying the car. Um, though the super handling all-wheel drive all but makes up for that as does really precise steering and how the super handling all-wheel drive works I've noticed is uh, a lot of cars will break one of the inner wheels uh, in a curve to help you know kind of pivot you and get you around the turn so this kind of does the opposite uh, in that it gives you more power on the outside wheel um, to help get you around the turn than the inside wheel has um, so I actually like hustling this SUV around turns and accelerating into those turns. It's it's a great feeling. The other small area though that could use a bit of improvement drive-wise is the brakes. They're not the tightest. They're good. They're very solid and you know there's no complaints but they're not the tightest brakes out there. The engine wouldn't say it's like super fast but as big SUVs go it's got plenty of performance um, for both, you know, around town and on the highway. So that, com coupled with the super handling all-wheel drive, coupled with the good steering, makes it, uh, you know, really fun SUV to drive. And you don't even have with to all the self-driving tech on there uh, as well. So you kind of get the best of both worlds there. When you want to drive it, it is relatively. Uh, engaging. The thing that would give me some pause about this SUV might be the price. There's sixty thousand dollars at fifty nine thousand. Uh, that does seem high until you look at all the equipment you get, and you look at the fact it's a luxury SUV, and even non-luxury brand SUVs now are getting really, really expensive, well up into the forties and fifties. So to go sixty niceness the Acura gets you isn't bad really really nice uh, SUV 
uh, 460 grand. Um, there's way more expensive luxury competitors that either don't handle as well, aren't as fun to drive, don't or... have as much technology. So it's a trade-off there, but it's definitely worthwhile. Um, to pay, you know, 60 for the, uh, I'll link at the end to the Mazda CX-9, which is, um, doesn't have quite the equipment of this or the Acura name, but it does have similar driving dynamics. Um, so that is a consideration if you're looking, you know, to not pay in that $60,000 price range, uh, you know, but still want a nice quality, fun to drive uh, SUV. So until next time, my speedy racers, drive on.